Okay, how you doing? I'm back. Yeah. And uh, next we're going to cover the uh, do's and don'ts of parenting. Learn them all from mine. Maybe not all of them, but most of them. Uh, you know, love my mother to death and uh, never forget all the sacrifices that she made for me and my brothers and sisters. But there was a darker side of her, too. Um, she was always overweight. And moving for her was a challenge. And uh, she had this uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing going on that uh, always happened every morning. <laughs> um. We just knew that there was a time to talk to Mama and there was time not to. <laughs> uh, and right out of the bed, do not walk in front of that bear. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> you better give that bear a minute, okay? Let her wake up. Because, uh... It was tough to get out of bed for her every morning and the struggles of what her avatar challenges were. And uh, many had those challenges. Um, just getting out of bed in the morning and getting going is a real struggle. Now, mind you, most of it was her own damn fault. I will give you that. But regardless of whose fault it was, it was a reality. And uh, so you just did not go to that bear until it was time. But uh, after that, she was a smooth, rubbing, loving mama all the way till bedtime. It was just that wake up time, that Dr. Jekyll time that uh, <laughs> Stay the hell away. <laughs> or just hide, whatever you want to call it. The, the bad side. Uh, yeah, the dark side. Uh, my daddy, on the other hand, it was just his moods. You know, there were days that... Uh, you, you might say he was bipolar. I'm. Uh, yeah, that'd probably be the best way to describe him. Because, boy, he had some highs, and man, he was just the funnest and most joyous person to be around and then there was those times when uh he had things on his mind that made him a bear himself and uh you knew when those times was you just stayed away from him and uh that was just the way it was with him i learned so many things from him though i was his uh apprentice mechanic forever everything he did as far as side jobs and just running to help somebody with something I went my others weren't useful and you know he trained one of us and that was all there was going to be and it was going to be me I mean he tried to get the others involved with it but uh, he didn't have the patience and they were like hell take Patrick take him let him run it let him do it so, uh, in a lot of ways, I was his sacrificial lamb there. And I did. And there were times, I'm telling you, I used to shudder working on cars with him some days because he wasn't happy that he had to do it. And uh, something like hold the flashlight, just, man, I'm telling you, there's times he'd smash his knuckle and... Uh, Blame me for not holding the flashlight right. And next thing you know, I'm dodging wrenches flying across the friggin' garage. Yeah. That, uh, that was daddy. <laughs> that was daddy. <sighs> but like I said, it, uh, it was just, I really do believe now that I've seen it and, and recognize it that, he, in a lot of ways, was bipolar. He uh, he never did get his emotions in check totally. Because, uh, like I said, and then when he'd get all goofy, oh my gosh. It was like having Gomer Pyle for a father. 
I was like, oh my gosh, dad, come on. It was, uh, it was a different thing being around my dad. But my mom, like I said, except for that Jekyll time in the morning, boy, it was just smooth running and always there and answering and spending time with us and, and, uh, keeping us, uh, acting right towards each other. See, we actually had time out before time out actually existed in my head. Back then, it was called stand your ass in the corner. <laughs> and that's exactly what she did. Get your ass over in that corner, and I don't want you to move until I tell you you can move. <laughs> and we have to stand in that corner and stare at that corner. And she said, don't you move that head. I want you to stare at that corner. You ain't going to act like that with your brother or your sister. No way. And you just stood there until mom said, okay, you're free. All right. Get away. Now behave. And uh, so, yeah, we had timeout before timeout actually existed. Or I guess it was timeout. It just wasn't called timeout. And uh, it was a good trainer. I'm telling you. A lot better than dad's. Dad's was like, come here, boy. Come here. Good. I had another Bam! You're gonna hurt right. Bam! Oh my gosh! I, you know what? I took some beatings, but then I got smart about that one. You know, see what you had to do was you had to carry on like you just killed me with that swing. Oh my God! Ah, Dad, that's it. I've had enough. I'll never do it again. I'm crying. I'm falling on the floor. <coughs> <coughs> and then I walk outside like, okay, whose turn was it on football, man? Stay away from dad. All right. Stay away from dad, guys. <laughs> yeah. I really was kind of unbreakable back in those days, too. It was like he couldn't hit me hard enough, dude. I, uh, and I got smart. I made it, acted it up really big. So that, uh, yeah, because it's all he do is get, try to get it harder. Shit ain't dumb. Okay, fine. You want me to cry? <laughs> That's exactly what I did. <laughs> uh, oh, and my mama would be so mad at him. She wouldn't talk to him. She would not talk to him after he did that. He, the rest of the day, yeah. Don't even talk to me. Don't. My dad would try to make up to her and say he was sorry and say sorry to us. And... <sighs> Sorry, dude, you lost your right to talk to me for today. And that's exactly what she did until the next day. And uh, it was uh, it was different back in the days. <laughs> it was different. And, uh, you know, I definitely learned what not to do. And I made sure that when I grew up and I had children, I was never going to strike them ever again. I was going to be smarter than that. I was just going to get them pay attention to why I have to teach them discipline and why it is the way it is. And, uh, yeah, I had time out, and I had times where I had to raise my voice and, and uh, let them know how serious their little violation was to me. But, uh, yeah. You just don't beat on children. That's not the right way. You teach them. And you give them punishments that are true punishments, but aren't about pain. It's about learning. Learning to do the right thing. And so many parents, first thing they do is... Uh, Pick up something to smack them with. Hopefully that'll go away. Because um, as we evolve, so will parenting. And getting through to him. Because like I said, he could have beat me till he was blue in the face and couldn't swing another swing. That pain wouldn't hurt me. But the knowledge of what was going down made me realize another way around. And uh, so uh, 
I got through it just fine. But I never want a child to ever have to endure what I did back in those days. Just when I was young, yeah, it did hurt. And left marks and the whole nine yards. So, and in a lot of ways, a lot of parents don't realize that the, the mental scar of being beat is uh, actually very traumatic on a child. And uh, them's are scars you can't see. They're in their head. And they're there forever. And uh, most likely you won't ever see them up in heaven because they won't want to remember it either. They'll just skip over that part. So, uh, as you raise your children, just remember that it's about teaching them, not punishment. It's teaching. All your job is to do is to teach. And use punishment, the proper punishment, just to get them back into the learning mode, okay? That's all it's supposed to be. It's not, okay, you are in hell for the whole day. I am going to make your day hell, all right? No, what you're going to do is put them in the corner until they're ready to learn again. And uh, they'll be anxious to listen after they do a little time. Yeah, time out is a great one. It is a great one. And uh, you'll find there's other ways to do it, too. You know, when they uh, don't want to act right and uh, they think that they own the world and... Uh, Okay, here, do me a favor. Kick over that trash can and fling it all over the kitchen floor. You know, I think I want to be a brat. Now, why don't you clean that up for me, would you? Because uh, I want to show you what it means to be a brat, okay? Because uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm being a brat, and uh, I'm going to make you clean that up. That'll catch them. That'll catch them. And there's a whole bunch of other clever ones. You know what I'm saying? You got to be smarter. You are. Act like it. All right. I'll be back with some more. All right. Hope everybody's having a good day. I'm having my coffee and kicking it and uh, loving life and loving my job. Although I don't really get out much. <laughs> Let's work from home. I, I don't know how you boys do this. <laughs> I'll be back.